One of the most contentious uh, battles around at the moment is the uh, boardroom battle going on over at Boomi. Yesterday we heard from Matt Rothschild, uh, a key shareholder in Boomi, about his desires to change the composition of the board over at Boomi. Ultimately, at the meeting yesterday, he did not get shareholder approval for most of his, um, his wish list in terms of changing the board and uh, Boomi's current strategy uh, under the CEO, Nick von Scherdening, uh, actually what got endorsement from a majority of investors. Now, whether those investors were tied to uh, the current management and the Bakri family, independence, what have you, uh, these are all questions which we'll put to Nick now. Because, Nick, um, Nat Rothschild called this a Pyrrhic victory for Boomi yesterday. I want you to say why it's not a Pyrrhic victory, and actually you think this is an endorsement of the strategy which you've outlined. Well, thanks, Steve. And I think, I think there are two important points out of the results here. If you remove the concert parties on both sides, either 30% from Nat, 30% from the Borneo joint venture, uh, it says two very important things. One is 87% of the free float voted against Nat coming back onto the board as an executive. That is a clear message, in my view, that the uh, very uh, openly hostile confrontational approach by Nat it, it, to all matters that, 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 re, that pertain to Burmese has not worked and shareholders don't endorse that. It, it, it won't get us anywhere. The second point, Steve, this, this makes is when you look at the votes for the board uh, and I take myself as the chief executive for one, 61% uh, in, in, in favour. If you take that again and you remove the 30% on each side, that translates into 81% endorsement by the free float in terms of my position. Now, I don't see that as any pat on the back. What I see that there is a mandate to get on with things and execute the strategy, which uh, I, I can highlight a bit later. Um. Vitriol. It's been um, quite contentious. I mean, look, get, don't get me wrong, for, for the likes of financial news channels, for the, the financial press, it's been absolutely fascinating. But in terms of hard facts, a lot of what the questions that Nick has raised are questions that you as a company have raised as well. The style of going about the questioning perhaps is, is incredibly different as well. But when I look at an article, and I'm going to quote Mr. Guy Chazan, who is an FT journalist who has raised many questions post the meeting yesterday, a lot of those questions are still relevant for not only the investors such as Nick, but also for you as well. Questions such as money allegedly lost from an Indonesian subsidiary. Now Nick's been, uh, sorry, pardon, Nat has been very uh, mm. aggressive about this. You guys have raised investigations as well. Are you satisfied that you're getting uh, the right answers on issues such as that? Look, Steve, it's a, it's a very good question and obviously it's a very key issue uh, and it's a very serious matter. So, uh, first of all, let me say this. The billion dollars that has gone missing, in inverted commas, uh, that occurred in the vast majority uh, before Bumi PLC became invested in the local Bumi uh, TVK Indonesian entity. Point number one. Point number two, these are allegations. They are not proven yet. So what the investigation is looking at now is proving any wrongdoing. It would be foolish now to come out with all of our findings during a live investigation. It was a bit like a police investigation. You sure. just wouldn't do that. It would also potentially impact our, our ability to claim compensation. So extremely serious matter. We are pursuing it with vigor. We've gone into Indonesia. We are talking to the Indonesian regulator, notwithstanding that some of this material was stolen, which is a criminal offense in Indonesia. We have raised it with uh, the UK regulators, including the Serious Fraud Office. So, you know, notwithstanding that these events occurred before PLC became involved, so this did not happen on the board's watch, you know, the vast majority of these allegations, we are nevertheless still going after this. Can I just clarify something? Because I asked Nat yesterday whether the UK fraud authorities were involved in this investigation given uh, the seriousness of those allegations. Nat pointed out to me that this was not in the remit of the fraud office. You've just told me that you are investigating with the help of the serious fraud office in the United Kingdom. So that allegation you can quite categorically refute that the UK regulatory authorities, the fraud office as well, are very firmly involved in these investigations. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Okay, Karen. I just want to come in on the level of uncertainty because what you highlight here with this investigation, this is ongoing. When we spoke to Nat yesterday, it seemed as though he was not just going to go quiet and he didn't feel like the vote in almost went the way you described it. He felt like there was still a bit of a, a protest vote that went, went through, so it doesn't suggest he's just going to walk away and go silent. Mm. Add to this, Sam and Tom, the chairman, has pledged to step aside when an independent chairman is found. So the vote and, and the proceedings yesterday didn't remove this element of uncertainty, and this has been one of the issues for the stock. 
the uncertainty for the company. So, so how do you prove that it's going to be on a straight path and that investors have certainty from this point forward? Well, I think, uh, Karen, I mean, it's, a, it's a good question. 25 of, of around 30 uh, in what I call long only big major UK institutions supported the board and, and that is uh, that that's an important point why do they do that um, a because we are the ones who can affect a separation from Bakri uh, and we are doing that uh, they have put a significant amount of money into escrow 50 million dollars worth and we are now going to move to the next stage which is a sale and purchase agreement when can I just pressure in this because when you say we uh, this is interesting because it felt like Sam and Tan had cut the deal so if he's not in the role as chairman and it's somebody else does this still deal still progress in its current form sure it does I mean Sam and Tan has said he will step down as, as chairman and so the search process is underway now for an independent well, chairman what is the timing around that then it well we're about to uh, the nominations committee is about to appoint a independent uh, search firm uh, here in the UK and, and, and the search will begin. Uh, you know, we will do this properly, we will consult with our major institutional shareholders as to who they are comfortable with in terms of refreshing the board, not only just chairman but the rest of the board as well because there are a number of board members who have uh, asked to step down. So I think you know, where, where we're going to end up, Karen, is, is, is this. You know, in a few months we will affect the separation from Bakri and this troubled asset, Burmi Resources, point number one. Point number two, we will have a refreshed smaller board with an independent chairman. Point number three, we will have a clear focus around Barao, which is our operating subsidiary. We have already made significant changes there in management. We have changed the mine plan. We have put uh, unprofitable capex on hold. So there's a lot going on there. And we will make further changes there. And we will have, importantly, net debt of about $100 million per this, this transaction. That is a good position to be in, particularly at this low point in the coal cycle. The other, other, the other element of uncertainty, rather, that I haven't brought up here is that you know, your position, there's been a lot of allegations lobbed by Nat, uh, which you've also refuted on this channel about your CV, but if you bring in another independent chairman, there, there could be the possibility that they push for change in your position as well. So how confident are you that you're going to be sitting in this position in 12 months' time? Look, I mean, it's up to the shareholders to decide. I have no issue with my CV, as I've said before. We put out a press release on this. You know, anybody can verify what we said in that press release. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two is, again, the board asked me to step up to this position. Uh, I have you know, 25 years of experience in the mining industry. I've worked very closely with chief executives on much bigger strategic issues at times at Anglo American. Uh, and I'm very confident we can get through this stage of this mess. If there's a better candidate going forward, you know, by all means, absolutely. Nick, can I ask you about this company going forward? Uh, and thank you very much indeed for just categorically going through some of those key issues that have been raised not only yesterday but throughout this process. The Rothschild Group, as you say, controls around about 30% of the shares. The Bakery Group, as you say, contains, uh, controls a similar amount of share. I don't see how this company can go on in the current form with the level of vitriol which both sides are having to defend and, and pour upon each other and what have you. There has to be something here for the independent shareholders, and I'm going to speak for them now. You guys have just got to sort this out one way or other. This cannot go on. We cannot see you effectively running Boomi going forward if you have this incredible battle going on in the background, rumbling forward. Isn't it time for somehow the, the two groups to come together and actually for the independent shareholders just get on with getting the shareholder value back in this company? I agree. Steve, I, com I completely agree with you. I mean, you know, when I took on this role uh, late last year, I said, you know, very clearly that, you know, to both sets of founder shareholders, step back wind your necks in and let an independent management led by myself sort this out because the issue here is you know is is is, is this troubled asset pt boomy and the bakery family we need to separate everybody wants that separation even nat rothschild wants that separation so allow us to do that allow me to do that and, and i would say this to nat and those independent shareholders who voted against the board yesterday of which there weren't many by the way but i would say to nat and those shareholders please come behind us and support us. You know, as you say, we have got to get through this. Otherwise, I'm not sure where we go. Uh, there is a clear solution here going forward. We're on the cusp of that. And actually, we could have a very exciting prospect in a few months with a renamed company, a very clear strategy, refreshed board. So, you know, the opportunity is here, but we need that support. Sure. I want to get your view on, on some comments that have been made. Obviously, when this story has broken, there's been so many shenanigans and scandals around it that a lot of investors who were interested in uh, investing in emerging markets might have been running away from other companies like this. But the Bakri's made a counterclaim saying, well, a lot of Indonesian investors also worried about investing in UK companies and taking their, their companies to market over here. What's your take on this? Do you think the reputation can be salvaged about uh, bringing together Indonesian companies? 
companies with the UK market? I, I think, Karen, they can. I mean, the, 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 you know, the, 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 they're not mutually exclusive. I mean, I think what, what has happened here is very unfortunate in terms of essentially, you know, two things. One, a flawed model that was brought to the London market uh, by Nat Rothschild, which effectively gave management control to the Bakery Group. That is not a good way of running uh, a, a company, okay? The second thing is there was a total fallout between these two families, the Rothschild, Nat Rothschild and the Bakery family. So it descended into total dysfunctionality. That is also not a good way where you have two key founder shareholders at war with each other. And I go back to my point, you know, let, let them separate out, let them stand back and let us get on with it. So, so what you're you know, saying is the Bakery should never have had management control? No, I don't think, I personally don't think that's the, that's, the, that's the best control. I think, you know, you should have independent management as we have now. The Bakery have stepped back and waived their right to appoint the CEO in my case because I have not taken sides with either shareholder here. Uh, and you know, a, a year ago when, when Nat Rothschild, uh, when the Bakeries wanted Nat Rothschild off the board, and we seem to have an EGM every, every year uh, when they wanted him off the board, uh, I helped persuade them to keep him on the board. You know, at that stage, the Bakeries wanted me fired. A year later, Nat wants me fired. So I must be doing something right. Uh, I'm not taking sides here and really just, as I say, doing the right thing for the independent shareholders. Well, great survival rate then based <laughs> on all that. Um, but I just want to ask you, timing-wise, when we look at a separation now of, of Boomi Resources from Boomi, what, what can we expect? When will there be a clean separation of the business? Are we talking a year? Oh, no, much, much earlier than that. So, so the next step, Karen, is sale and purchase negotiations will, will uh, begin over the next uh, few weeks, uh, next week actually, um, and we then, once our final results are published in mid-March, uh, we will then issue a prospectus, uh, and then we call an EGM, another EGM, uh, Lucky shareholders. In, 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 in within 21 days, and we will put that to the vote, and, and you know, that, that then is the crossroads as to can this company move forward out of this mess. These meetings have got to be getting expensive for the company, don't they? It is um, we've got to leave it there, Nick. Thank you very okay. much indeed for Thank joining you. us. And it's always good to get both sides of the story. Uh, and as I say, we don't take a view on this. We're just very happy to hear both sides and very pleased that you want to do this on CNBC as well. So, Nick, thank you very much thank indeed you. for your time. Nick von uh, Scherdening, who is the CEO of Boomi.